This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. Click the link in the description below. What if I told you there was an always on, carbon free, renewable power source deep beneath the Earth's surface? Why haven't we been using this power source that's literally available under our feet as much as possible? Well, let's look at the explanation behind geothermal energy and its challenges, one of which is a little groundbreaking. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Solar and wind energy is growing worldwide. However, the intermittent power generation characteristics has kept many researchers and companies on the search for other solutions without needing batteries for storage. A lot of people are championing things like small modular reactors and thorium reactors, which I've done videos on already. But what about the great energy potential that's available inside the planet? We're talking about geothermal energy, which is thermal energy generated and stored in the rocks and fluids beneath the Earth's crust. It's been used for thousands of years by humanity for heating and cooling. Its first usage was mainly for bathing and cooking, but since the 20th century it's been harnessed to generate electricity. How? Well, the Earth's internal heat is thermal energy generated from radioactive decay and non-stop heat loss from the planet's formation, and it can be found from shallow ground to several miles under the surface. Heat from the Earth's crust warms water that has flowed into the underground reservoirs, sometimes up to 360 degrees Celsius. And when water gets hot enough, it can break through the surface as steam or hot water which usually happens where the Earth's crust or plates meet and shift. If you've ever seen a geyser, it's formed by this same process. Now, naturally occurring geothermal systems called hydrothermal systems are composed of three key elements, fluid, heat, and permeability at depth. This alone presents one of the first challenges to geothermal systems. There's only a small percentage of land that lies above suitable pockets like this. To produce electricity from geothermal energy, wells are dug into the underground reservoirs to tap steam and hot water that's used to spin turbines connected to electric generators. Dry steam generators is the oldest form of geothermal energy. In these geothermal power plants, the steam is piped up from underground wells directly to drive generator turbines. In 1904, the first geothermal power plant was built in Tuscany, Italy, where natural steam broke out from the earth. A great example of dry steam are the geysers in California, which cover more than 117 square kilometers and power 22 power plants for an installed capacity of over 1.5 gigawatts. In a similar fashion, flash steam power plants utilize high pressure hot water from deep inside the earth and convert it into steam to turn generator turbines. But when the steam cools, it condenses to water and is piped back into the ground for reuse, making it a sustainable resource. Some countries are continuing to move forward with geothermal energy as a power source. Iceland, for example, is a pioneer in geothermal energy for heating spaces, and the power generation with this source has boosted considerably in the past few years. Currently, the country produces 25% of its total electricity by taking heat from underground. As of 2018, the US, Indonesia, and the Philippines lead the world with installed capacity, which ranges between 1.93 gigawatts and 2.54 gigawatts. However, from a worldwide perspective, geothermal is still growing at a slow speed. From 2010 to 2019, the installed capacity only increased from 10 gigawatts to 14 gigawatts across the planet, according to the International Renewable Energy Agency. It's not on track to reach the Sustainable Development Scenario, or SDS. In a 2020 tracking report, geothermal energy needs to be increased by 10% annually from 2019 to 2030 to reach the SDS level. But there is one type of geothermal plant that might be able to rise to the challenge. Binary cycle power plants. Now, these power plants differ from flash steam and dry steam systems because the geothermal reservoir never comes in direct contact with the generator. Instead, it transfers the heat from low to moderately heated geothermal fluid, which is usually under 93 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit, to another liquid with a much lower boiling point through a heat exchanger. It's a closed loop system. It's that liquid that turns into a steam to drive the generator turbine, producing the electricity. The steam condenses and is reused to the closed loop cycle again. But there's a challenge to all of this. The higher the temperature you need, the deeper it's necessary to drill, which dramatically impacts the economic feasibility of geothermal power plants. And this brings up the subject of enhanced geothermal systems, or EGS. There are areas with very hot rocks under the ground, but they're too dry and impermeable for traditional geothermal systems. EGS was created to work around these issues of hot rocks lacking in natural permeability or fluid saturation. In these systems, wells are drilled into a formation of hot rock, then a fluid at high pressure is injected into the subsurface under precise conditions, causing the reopening of pre-existing fractures, which increases the permeability. Now, I know that sounds a lot like fracking, and there are some similarities, but it is different. Instead of using extremely high pressure water to break rock, they're using temperature differences between the hot rock and cold water to allow existing cracks to open from the expansion and contraction caused by the temperature change. 
to make it more efficient, non-toxic and degradable materials injected to fill these fractures, forming new cracks as the engineers drill further down. This process allows the fluid to go throughout the now fractured rock, carrying heat to the surface through other drills in order to drive generator turbines with steam. The Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy says that there's more than 100 gigawatts of cost-effective energy capacity that might be available here in the US, which represents about 10% of the current US electricity capacity. On top of that, a study showed that the cost-effective worldwide potential is expected to be around 6 terawatts in 2030 and 108 terawatts in 2050. In the same paper, the authors indicated that 4,600 gigawatts of EGS capacity can be developed at a cost of around 50 euros or $60 per megawatt hour, or even lower. There are some obvious advantages for exploring geothermal energy. It drives generator turbines without burning fossil fuels. And binary cycle power plants don't release greenhouse gases because of the closed loop system. Compared to natural gas power plants, geothermal units generate about 80% less carbon dioxide. In addition to that, they can deliver energy 24-7, 365 days a year, beating the intermittency of solar and wind. However, like anything else in the technology world, there's always trade-offs. Despite being carbon-free, reliable, and highly efficient, and low-maintenance power sources, geothermal energy still has technical and economic challenges. The installation cost is one of the major obstacles on the roadmap for spreading geothermal energy. The main costs come from exploration and drilling for new reservoirs, so there's a lot of risk for coming up empty when you drill. From 2010 to 2019, the global weighted installation cost for a 1 megawatt geothermal power plant ranged from $2.5 to $5 million. Just looking at the weighted cost for installation from 2019, you're talking about a cost of $3,916 per installed kilowatt. In comparison, a solar power plant is about $995 per kilowatt which might explain why investments in this sector have been tiny compared to all the money spent on solar and wind technology. In 2019, the investment in geothermal power generation was $1.2 billion, while solar and wind corresponded with $141 and $142.7 billion. At this point, the landscape for geothermal energy is mostly dominated by research and development institutions and some startups. One company playing this game is Climon, which develops modular 150-kilowatt geothermal power units to operate at low pressure and temperatures between 70 degrees Celsius and 120 degrees Celsius, much lower than usual geothermal power plants. It requires less energy in pumping, has lower overall cost, and is easy to scale due to the modularity of the product. And according to the company's chief technology officer, the cost of the generated electricity changes depending on the access to the heat source and the size of the power plant. But the cost of electricity for some projects reached 40 euros per megawatt hour or $49 per megawatt hour. In April of 2019, the company commissioned a power plant in Iceland with 600 kilowatts of electric power capacity produced from 450 kilowatt Climon modular units, which is a fairly compact sized geothermal power plant. There are also companies and startups focused on improving drilling, finding ways to reduce the number of moving parts that can wear out, like the GeoDrill Consortium project in Europe. They're aiming to decrease costs through robust 3D printed sensors and improve component life through advanced materials and coatings. Others are focused on laser, plasma, chemical, and electric arc technologies like the Savakian GA drilling. They have a plasma bit that can drill up to 10 kilometers, reaching ultra-deep geothermal rocks. However, most startups in the drilling innovation are still in the early stages. Greenfire Energy is another company that's innovating in geothermal energy, but the company's focus is on its advanced closed-loop cycle system called Green Loop. It uses several working fluids flowing through a sealed system to access the high temperatures required for economic energy extraction. Greenloop reduces the exploration risk in new projects since subsurface permeability or large volumes of water aren't required. Basically, there is no risk of water contamination or induced seismic activity. In 2019, the American company successfully demonstrated Greenloop technology in Coastal California. So there's interesting research and development underway. But there's one challenge that geothermal energy generation has that might concern some of you. As I mentioned in my opening, it's kind of groundbreaking. But before I get to that, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn more about renewable energy and how it works, check out the Solar Energy course at Brilliant. I talk a lot about solar power on the channel, and this course helped me a lot. It goes through everything from the basics of solar radiation to how a solar cell harvests just the right photon. Not any old photon will do. Now, if solar isn't your thing, Brilliant has over 60 courses and other topics like mathematics, science, and physics. They teach it in a way that really works for the way I learn. All of the concepts are conveyed through fun and interactive challenges, which helps you understand the why of something, not just the how. It helps you to develop your intuition. Now go to brilliant.org undecided to sign up for free. 
The first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Thanks to Brilliant and to all of you for supporting the channel. So what's this groundbreaking concern? Well, there's concerns about injection-induced seismicity in EGS systems specifically. Now remember, EGS is the one that has rough similarities to fracking. In November 2017, a magnitude 5.5 earthquake shook South Korea, caused $75 million in damages, injured dozens, and forced more than 1,700 people into emergency housing. And there's research that has clearly tied this event to EGS drilling in the area. It came down to the water being injected into one of the wells, activating a previously unknown fault that went right through the well. The water and the pressure created a scenario that basically greased the skids and made it easier for the fault to move. Without the water, the quake wouldn't have happened. The odds of this happening are actually pretty low, but obviously not zero. So proper precautions and risk assessments have to take place, but there's no silver bullet to prevent this type of thing from happening. So you can probably see why geothermal hasn't quite caught on as well as other renewable methods like solar and wind. Utility-scale geothermal energy has a lot of room for improvement. It still relies on excessive investments, research, and the resolution to technical challenges. And it's geographically limited. It's worth further research, but will most likely never match the scale of its renewable brothers and sisters. So what do you think? Jump into the comments and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. As always, thanks to all my patrons and to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.